Hello and we are back. Hope for tomorrow radio here on reggae to reggaecom It's Ricardo Stevenson alongside the host with the co-most and the best in the biz co-host ever, Octavia Duhaney. And we are where? In the ladies lounge. So what's up to my co-host with the most? Of course, always a pleasure kicking it with you here every Monday. And tonight, I was talking to our listeners about determination and faith being the key to overcoming your obstacles. So in anything that you do, if you are not determined and you do not have the faith, it cannot happen. So, you know, as always, we always talk about things and kick it on a real to real level. So, you know, tell me, what do you think? What do you think about the topic so far? Topic is great. Mm -hmm. um, it's one that's needed because... Um, a lot of times, when we're making that big step, yes, you know, um, we need to have that faith. You know, yes. a lot of times we we do a lot out of faith yes, and, and not realizing it. You know, yes, um, even when we were doing the wrong things, <laughs> <laughs> we were wrong we went things. out there. Yeah. We went out there on faith yes, on the did. wrong things, and it worked, right? Yeah. And we're still here to talk about it. That's true. So let's step out on faith on the right things. Yes. You know, and still give it all you got. I mean, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of people have learned that the fast money, that's exactly what it is. It, it's made fast and it's spent fast. Yes, it is. It disappears fast. You know, and on money that you make <laughs> that seems to be slow money, it's more sure money. Yes. You know? Yes. And so when we step out there, we usually step out mm -hmm. on faith. Because yes. we don't go into something knowing how the turnout is going to be. So we go out there on faith. Even if your friend did it, you didn't do it. So when you go out there to do it, you're stepping out there. Well, look, I know I'm going a, I'm to a make it. Yes. So, you know, with doing the right things, just have that same faith, positive base you know, a surety that you're going to do it. It's going to happen. And even so more with it being positive, it will be more beneficial. Right. It will be more rewarding, you know. And um, I always say if it's right, it's going to get a fight, you know, but yes. you just have to stand on it, you know. And so it feels much better um, for me, you know, because I dealt drugs and, I'm not really proud of it, but at that time, I didn't think of it like I'm doing something wrong, you know. I saw it to be a hustle, you know, buy some pampers and milk and have what I want to have, you know. And um, it was a way of survival. Yes. At that time, I was too young to really think of the detrimental, you know, acts, you know, or the destruction of families or the addictions, you know, I didn't think of it like I was contributing to, you know, something wrong, you know, I was thinking of it more like, hey, I'm making money, you know, um, I can buy the kids their pampers and pay my rent and buy food, you know, and stuff like that, because it was really difficult getting a job. I mean, I, was, I had got a job, but I didn't get paid till... 30 days you know it was like you got to work the probationary period and then you're gonna get your check and for most of this probationary time I needed money I needed to get to and from I needed to buy lunch I needed now to pay my rent so instead of this job assisting me it was digging a deeper hole for me you know yeah, yeah. and it just pushed me to doing more illegal things you understand yeah. And my biggest um, illegal act was dealing drugs. And it, it's not like 
hey, everything is fine and I need a hobby. And I used it for a hobby. I used it for surviving, yes. you know. Prepa- uh, just, you know, being able to provide. And so from being able to provide and um, as you know, like you were speaking of earlier, consistency mm-hmm. is what shows potential. Yes, it does. It's not health or wealth. It's consistency. Mm-hmm. Whether bad or good, I always tell people that. It's a good thing, being consistent. Being consistent. Right. If I was to, even now at the age I'm at now, if I was to take like a lemonade, make some lemonade, and be at a certain spot every day, and, and someone takes my lemonade and it's delicious, and I'm at this spot every day, that one word of mouth will bring two. And then those will bring, but my consistency, no matter how many people come, if I'm not there, there's no sale. So just me being consistent, whether or not, you know, the individuals come, they know, well, hey, you know, she's there at three o'clock. Hey, it's three o'clock, she's there. Mm-hmm. And when three o'clock comes, you're there, you're gonna get a sale. Yes. Then two, then three, just being consistent builds. Yes, it does. It builds, you know, and so that was the thing. It's just like dealing drugs. I mean, I could have all the drugs I want selling. If I'm not there consistently, That's no good. it's no good. There's no sales, there's no sure. purchase. So the consistency is what made this work. So if you took that, like Minister Wendy Lovejoy always says, you know, being consistent. And if we can take that bad act that we had done and make it a good act, you know, from dealing drugs, you become like the best salesperson. Of course, I have great management skills as well. Right, you know. And um, when you realize this, when you say, hey, how did I sell that old watered down or that mildew weed or, <laughs> or whatever you know, and you got rid of it you know and then you went and purchased more it's the same thing with the business if you're selling shoes you got rid of shoes you got to go purchase more shoes yeah. you know you learn from that first um hands-on experience how to enhance how to make better sales how to keep it going you know and it's the same thing with business so i really um I really like the program, you know, I like the topics, you know, topics are very important. Um, it, it gives a person a, a different avenue, you know, it, it, to stay focused, mm-hmm. but yet turn the bad into good. You know, it might be a little bit slower, but it's sure, mm-hmm. it's more sure, you know. So when you were ducking and hiding, whether it was hiding, ducking the police, or maybe a robber, or some friend that always hitting you up for money, (laughs) you know, know, it's the same thing, you know, now you're not ducking and hiding and running, Mm -hmm. you're you're putting yourself out there, it's like, look, I've got the best popcorn, or, I mean, because even popcorn, let's say, Popcorn, fifty dollars and a hundred dollar bag. If you're consistent, you're at that same spot popping that popcorn. Yes, sir. You can accumulate a home, a car, because yes, people is more in tune spending fifty dollars than five hundred dollars nowadays. Quickly, quickly, it's easier to give it up to you. Easy. For for our listeners out there abroad, a fifty dollars Jamaican is probably um twenty five cents. Or 50 cent, 50 cent, 50 cent, probably less, 30 cent, yeah, 40 cent. around that US. So, what she's basically saying is that no matter what field or what business or what hustle you may have, just as long as you're persistent, consistent enough to continue doing your thing the same way, being there on time, being on Johnny on the spot, as they say, every day there, you're going to accumulate something, something you're going to amass some funds. People are going to start coming to you. And you're right. A person, the, the least thought about spendage is a dollar or less. Right. In any country. Right. I believe mean, that. Right. I mean, if I, in Jamaica, I don't think people think of spending $100 at something. No. Really. You know, that you're thinking I mean, twice where to spend it or how to spend it. 
Those little coins that's considered pennies, yeah. but they're a dollar. What is it? Those little the brown money ones? No, the silver one. The silver one. They it's a throw dollar. that away. Yeah, that's a dollar. A million of those is a million dollars. I said, I, I mean, they just throw it like yeah. they'll get it. I went to the store and I had counted out some, you know, and they said they don't accept. I said, excuse me. I said, but twenty of these are twenty dollars. Yeah. So what do you mean you don't accept it? You know. So now I try to keep my little silver dollar, you know, my little one dollar, what they don't accept, and I'm allowing mm -hmm. them to accumulate. Of course. Because they make it, someone's going to take it. Of course. You know, so. Um, just to finish your point real quick, when we come back, me and Octavia will be continuing our conversation on determination and faith. And I'd like to thank our listeners for being out there tuning in. Hope for tomorrow radio here on reggae to reggae dot com. We'll take a quick short break. We'll be right back. Keep it tuned to reggae to reggae dot com and we'll have more for you. Keep it locked. Isn't this amazing? You get to have your friends and people that you build relationships with come out and share good, good, positive information. And uh, you've heard a lot of good stuff here. And I'm hoping to pull it all together with the Yellow Letter Mentoring Campaign. That's what we started this uh, series about real estate and social media. And you guys lucked out. You've got some of the best of the best in Atlanta, Georgia out here sharing some stuff with you. I want to go back to last week, the training that we did. I shared a little bit about my story and what got me involved in real estate um, and how I connected into getting this done. Um, a few years ago when I got started, I got started in real estate because I was at the time broke and I needed some cash and somebody told me get into real estate and I did. Got a real estate license in the New York area, passed the class first time, which a lot of people tell me they took the class three, four times, but I passed the first time and I interviewed a lot of different brokers and found the top broker in the Queens area and uh, decided to work for him. So within a year I had my own office and went from there got really involved with real estate investing in the New York area, Atlanta, uh, Florida, and some other areas. And one of the things that I found that really helped me was the yellow letter mentoring campaign, being able to write a letter to a group of people and ask them, are they looking to sell their house or just ask them if they're open to letting you buy their house for cash. Now, I've gotten a few people that have signed up for the mentoring program that starts at the end of the month. And some of them, the first question they asked is, can I do this if I have bad credit or do I need good credit to be able to do uh, real estate investing? And again, the Yellow Letter Mentoring Program, we teach you how to do this no matter what your credit looks like. But I always encourage people that as you're making money from this program, you want to start working on clearing up your debt, clearing up and getting higher credit scores because, you know, it's costing you in other areas of your life if your scores are not in the 700s. So again, you can do this program whether you have good or bad credit and we will help you in fixing and um, upgrading your credit scores along the process. Another thing you can do with the Yellow Letter Mentoring Program is you can just choose to buy a house for yourself and your family. I have a young lady that just got her house and uh, she has no mortgage on it. In her 20s with four children, bought something dirt cheap and you can get that with the Yellow Letter Mentoring Campaign. You might be thinking of a real estate investment property, maybe four units, maybe you know a shopping center, 
everything is possible through this program. Now, there's four ways that I really like to use this. And if you're somebody who's brand spanking new and you need to raise some capital, one of the first things you might consider doing with the Yellow Letter Mentoring Campaign or um, the program is become a bird dog. Just drive up and down streets, find properties, uh, refer them to us, we show you how to get them sold, and you can make some quick cash. You don't make as much as a bird on bird dogging as you do with wholesaling, but if you need a couple of thousand dollars a month, that's a good place to start. If you need more than a couple of thousand dollars a month, then wholesaling is a good place to start. Now, some people like to make 20, 40, 50,000. Those are people that like to find properties that you need to fix and, and, and you know, resell. We call that fix and flip it. So, uh, or you can fix it and rent it out, keep it for yourself, hold it. We call that buying and holding. All of this is explained in the Yellow Letter Mentoring Campaign. Everything that it takes to build a successful real estate business will be taught in this program. And one of the things I like to teach people is not to work so much in real estate that they lose a wife, they lose a husband, or the kids grow up and don't know who you are. A lot of the people that I speak to, that seems to be the issue. They work real estate so much that along the way they lose family members. And that's because I think they've not built the right team. They've not focused on a schedule. Um, we teach you how to work on all of that. My family is still intact. Um, I live a very good and happy life. I, I'm very excited to teach that. And so uh, it all, again, is because of building a team and working my schedule. If you don't schedule your family in and everything's about you being worried about making more money because you got bills, you're going to turn around and the bills will still be there, but your loved ones will be gone. We don't want that for you. So again, this program teaches that. We give you a lot of support encouragement. One of the conversations that I just had, um, one of my friends said to me, Wendy, I, when I asked, how can I support you and your business? He said, just encourage me, just keep me encouraged to keep going forward. Well, we help you in this program. We also keep you very accountable. I am not the kind of person and neither are people on my team that allow you to get on um, the training program and then nobody's watching what you're doing or you know, keeping you pushing forward. And so accountability is key. We really wanna help you with that. We also give you a lot of dialogue and help you if you need the help in closing your first one to three transactions in real estate. Um, you've heard of different team players before I came and sat at this um, webinar tonight, but you need people that can help you fix the property like a contractor, you need uh, insurance, you need social media, all of this comes together. And if you think that you're somebody that's gonna do all of this yourself and have success, you're, you're not going to. I believe in partnering up with people that are experts at what they do and let me do what I like to do most. And believe it or not, you end up with more free time and you make a lot more money that way. It is not easy to build a successful real estate business if you do not have a mentor. Um, Danita Agandaga, who is Darcy's wife, called me after the last uh, conference, the live webinar we did, and she said, Wendy, I really appreciate the fact that you shared that people should stretch for a mentor. And the reason I bring that up is because this course is under $500 that I'm sharing with you. And yet some people will say, well, I can't afford to do it. And I say, if you felt this resonate in your spirit and you always wanted to get into real estate, whether you are a realtor now and you're looking for more listings. Um, one of my yellow letters just this past weekend, and this is a story that happens often, but one of my yellow letters um, that I sent out about a month ago, gentleman responded. I ended up with 12 properties from him, 12 different units. 
One of them is the house that he lives in. And so as an investor, I can't really sell that. So I had to connect him to a realtor. And I connected him to Donald Patterson, who got the listing that day. And uh, so it is a way to help real estate people get more listings. That's another thing that I use the yellow letter uh, mentoring campaign to help people that I know in real estate get more listings. But what if you took the course yourself and learned how to get listings yourself or you needed to find some buyers? This works for that. But it is a program that I encourage you to stretch if you have to find the money so that you can get started. We have another series getting started at the end of this month. You get the first conference call the last Tuesday of March, and then the course itself starts in April. By then, we will have furnished you with over 200 addresses, zip codes that you tell me you want. And, um, you know, we teach you how to do the letter. And uh, a lot of people that are joining this mentoring program are actually from other states. I have people that have signed up from California, Michigan, New York. Uh, I even have people asking me, I live outside of the country. Can I learn to do this? And if you want to invest in Atlanta or any of the 50 states, yes, you can. And so uh, those are some of the questions I've been getting since the last mentoring course that the last webinar we did. So I wanted to address that. <laughs> so a bird flew down this morning as if he's saying something to me. Sitting on the limb of a tree, giving me a sound of sweet melody. Listeners and viewers, we are back. Hope for tomorrow radio here on reggae to reggae.com. Radio like you've never seen it, TV like you've never heard it. Again, if you want to join our conversation, just go to reggae to reggae.com, select live stream, and you can tune right into our chat room. Remember, again, as we say, this is a program to help empower deported migrants, so we'd really like for you to help us with any donations. If you please can, Hope for Tomorrow, Care of Wendy Lovejoy, 6555. Sugarloaf Parkway, Suite 307, Duluth, Georgia, 30097. Also, for any um, questions you may have or you want to call and find out about any pro any of our programs, 1-305-454-6484. And also, if any you have any questions for me here at the radio station, 845-9518. My phone number is 845-9518. Tonight, our conversation is about being determined and having faith and staying focused no matter the obstacle and you're supposed to look in the mirror and say i am the solution octavia you are a perfect solution for our questions tonight and i'd like to you know stress to our listeners and our viewers out there that especially for the deported migrants that are tuning in that um don't worry about being stigmatized don't worry about being a cast off or you may even feel introverted when it comes down to it at times you know when you you know first get out here but um don't feel like a leper so to speak but just remember that the more determined you are the more diligent you are the more faith you have your chances of succeeding are in the high highest of the percentile but if you become too discouraged, and especially if you become discouraged too easily, that is a quick way to hit rock bottom. So 
for our listeners out there, as I'm here with my co-host with the co-most, as we do every Monday night, you know, where do you think that right now the mindset of the deported migrant is? Where do you think his mindset is like? Most of them that are coming in for the ones that are arriving. Well, you know, it's it's more on hopelessness because um, remember, the society, the economics, the culture, everything is so different, and um, most persons, I know, I do. When I learned that I um, may be deported, you know. Um, what I needed to do for um, soul searching as well as accepting, I went and I researched Jamaica because mm. I didn't know Jamaica. You know, I left there when I was five, and I was away for forty-seven years, so there was totally nothing mm-hmm. that I knew of Jamaica. And the first thing I did was I went into the global research um, data that was available to me. And I looked up Jamaica economics. And when I saw that the minimum wage was like, at that time it was like 35 US dollars. You know, they didn't increase it at that time. And um, I was like, oh my God. How am I going to live on 35 U.S. dollars a, a week? You know, yeah, that was that was wow. the wages. Wow. And, and for security officers, it was like 4,500, you know. And so far, like now, I think the minimum wage is like $56, you know. Yeah, it's serious, it's serious. And for someone coming from... America or anywhere else that's unbelievable it's unseen it's like unimaginable how can someone live that was like transportation money you know once you step foot out your house in America it's like well you know right as you step foot out your house that's $20 yeah that's $2,000 so to imagine that you're gonna live off of maybe 15 more dollars on top of that $20 for a week that's mind blowing it, and it's, it's, it seems almost impossible and it seems almost impossible it does. It does. You, know, I mean, you can't fathom mm. that summation no cause for our listeners out there we know um, Octave is not just speaking I mean she gives you the stats she's not just rattling off of her head. This is our oh, personal is experience serious. and what we know is serious business, yeah. listeners. Finish, finish telling And me. you know, like, my first concern was how am I going to stay in touch with my children? Of course. You know, and uh, I looked into that. What are the communication carriers like? I mean, then I learned there was only cable and wireless and digital. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, well how does this work you know and then I was like well do they have rates and then when I came down here I saw that it was way cheaper to um, keep in touch with overseas than inland Jamaica so I was like okay that's good for me because everybody for me is in the state Mm -hmm. so I was glad for that but then it was how am I going to maintain where are the jobs what's you know so you know the concerns are great And as you know, um, coming from first world countries, wherever it is, you know, you tend to do a lot of research in first. You tend to look into situations and matters, you know, that you're going to step off into. So I think because of this, it's a deterrent. You Mm -hmm. know, it, 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 it just really adds to your depression, you know, but when you're here and have to deal with it it's like you got to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and um we are great how should i say we are great survivors yes we are you know we are adaptable just like when it was reversed like when we went to the states we had to adapt you know the changes were the same you know the um the gif graphical makeup you know we had to adapt to that the climate 
everything, you know, um, the accent, the people. So it's now in retrospect, but this is your culture, mm -hmm. you know. So when I look at it, I says, okay, it's great economical change, but obviously it's just like same as living in America. Because if you're living in New York and you move to Florida, there's economical differences. It is. And the, the value of the, the dollar, it, regardless even if it's in America, it's still the same, you know, as it is down here. You know, it can only stretch so far. And the cost of living in one state is greater than the next. Right. Keep that thought. We're going to take a quick short break. We'll be right back. Hope for tomorrow radio here on reggae to reggaecom mm -hmm. Keep it tuned to reggae to reggae.com and we'll have more for you. Keep it locked. This is the uprising rose, but I represent the reggae to reggae.com. Boom, shakalakalaka, boom, boom, boom. Sing, check out. I'm out. Trench down, you keep on rocking. Bang, 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 Trench down, you keep on rocking. Yeah, yeah, the uprising group. Reggae to reggae. Reggae to reggae. Taking over the world. We are back. Hope for tomorrow radio here on reggae to reggae.com. Again, me and my lovely co host Octavia, we're just going over our conversation about having determination and faith during all your obstacles that you might go through regardless of your circumstance and looking at yourself in the mirror saying I am the solution because you are we all are we are we are all our solutions to our own problems not the problem or the question but the solution you were making an interesting point before you went away about you know how you know cost of living affects things you know economic crisis regardless if it's in one country or the next and the equivalent of the two being the same pretty much as what's going on out here and um you're right right on the head but um when you left off you were talking about you know living on certain wages of you know 35 dollars and stuff like that so i want, to, want you to continue to really educate them about that you know, the cost right. of living yeah because right. you know everything we do cost of transportation communications uh keeping yourself up, you know, as far as nourishment, yes. having a shelter, and clothing, you understand? Uh, these are basic needs that cost the deported, you know? And uh, we thank, we are thankful for the hostels because, you know, this is somewhat a relief, you know, to know that there is availability as far as shelter. Mm -hmm. You know, and as far as um, somewhere, you know, to be able to could get a meal or two, but then it's not really available for everyone. That's true. That's you true. Understand? It's very true. And I want to just thank the families, you mm -hmm. know, that do care. Yes. I want to thank the family members that do give, yes. you know, as far as um, receiving mm -hmm. a deported migrant into their home yes. to show that, look, we care about you, you know, you're a family. And I want to thank the families abroad that are in support of their yeah. family members who have been deported. You know, it's sometimes it just becomes a burden on them because they have to survive also. Then they have this dependent on them, you know, as a dependent migrant. That too holds very stressful on the deported migrant because especially the men. Mm -hmm. You know, men tend to be or want to be independent. Yes. You know, they don't want to call someone all the time when they're in need of. Of course, of course. You know. not. Oh yeah. So true. that will 
put a damper on them, you know, as far as being a male, mm -hmm. a man. You know, it'll make them feel less than mm -hmm. a man because they're depending on someone, you know, when maybe the family is looking to them. So that can really, you know, dampen their spirits as well. And, um, you know, you at that point in time, I think it's a lesson that we need to learn of faith, mm -hmm. you know, and trust in a higher power. You know, because there are times in our lives that we may not look for that. You know, we become so independent mm. that it takes a toll on us as an individual where we tend to not look to God. You it's know, true. it's like if I was rich, I may not look to God because I could buy everything, you know, mm -hmm. or I could have everything. So I don't look to God. It's like, well, who is God, you know? They may look at it to say, well, I buy my stuff, I do this, I do that, you know. They would um, not give any credit to God because of the money. The money is what they'll give the credit to because it does it for them. When in actuality, there's people with money that cannot spend it. Yeah. That money is froze. Well, how are you making it then, you know, or... You may have had that status, you know, like one time I went and visit my uncle, he stays in Wilshire, and there's this really beautiful house, and I'm like, every time I pass the house, I'm like, wow, the house is so beautiful, and my uncle told me a story, he was like, yeah, and the owner, he can't even go next to the gate, I'm like, why, uncle, he's like, because they got men looking to kill him, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like, man, that must be really sad you yeah. have this big beautiful house and you can't even live in it i know you know and that's how it is for a lot of people sometimes you have all these cars you can't drive in mm -hmm. it you have all this money you can't spend, spend it. it yeah you have this big house and you can't live in it so i mean you know different there's different um issues for different people yeah it's, it's like the story in the bible that said to gain the whole world and lose your soul so, basically what it is you know? yeah, it is. and here it is you're sitting with everything like you hear about these movie stars and they have everything and mm -hmm. they commit suicide yes and that's mind-boggling because you would think the perception is that they are happy because they got money right yeah. even beyonce you know one time they um did a clip on her she went to china and she was so depressed because mm -hmm. she opened her window and she saw china and she could not go into china as a regular person. No, so she had yeah. to stay in her hotel room and she cried and she cried mm -hmm. and she cries, you know. And I'm sure there, there's those depressed times. You can't be this individual that you are. It's true. You know, this God made individual to walk free, breathe free, you know, just be free. You can't do that because of your status. People are looking to just greet you, but they may kill you from just the importance of your you know, your position in life, you understand? And to me, that's worse. That's worse than not having any money, walking in the streets, can't go anywhere. I mean, why have all this money? You cannot even enjoy it, mm -hmm. you know? And so, even me, you know, like, when I got here, and like, you know, there's times when hunger was like, Phew. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, it really took its toll, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. You can you literally mean. feel the fat burning off of you. <laughs> no, seriously. You can literally feel this because yeah. you're not eating. Yes. You can just feel the burning, yes. you know? And um, I just said, well, you know, Father, sometimes there's things that is done involuntarily. It's done in a spiritual realm. So I just prayed. I said, well, okay. I'm not eating, and I don't consider that like an involuntary fast. Yeah. You know? Now I just need to pray. Amen. Because I'm not eating. Yeah. So I'm gonna pray. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then it'll come. It'll fall in this gap. It's like, yeah. okay, well, I didn't voluntarily say I'm going to fast. Right. But I mean, I'm not eating. You know, but I still have my strength, and I'm still who I am. You know, and I still could pick myself up and go move forward. You know, I mean, it wasn't like I was bed stricken or so forth. And a lot of times you have to do the mind over matter. Yeah. You understand? Like even this morning, I was looking in the closet for something and I pulled. I just don't even know what I pulled. 
but it's not a disc or anything. It seems to be maybe a muscle or something. And I mean, I could have just fell to the ground, you know, like paralytic, right? But I said, no, I'm not going to let this get me, you know? So I was like, I laid down for a little bit, like straight, you know, like straight. And then I did some like stretches and stuff. But it's I, even now, it's mind over matter, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So if I was to allow this to consume me, I'd be laying in the bed, can't be move. Frost. Right. You'd be out of it. I'd totally. be out of it. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. So it's always that you have to instill within yourself what it is. You have to you have to visualize. Like even when I was incarcerated and I had um they gave <laughs> me like they gave me like three hundred and sixty five days segregation. Yeah. S H U <laughs> and I was like I was down there and like we would get oranges on the train and I'll peel the orange and I'll throw it in the toilet and then they'll pass by and they're like, Duaney, what is that? I was like, aromatherapy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, aromatherapy, what's up? Yeah. You know, they're like, Duaney, get that out of there. <laughs> and I would let my orange peel sit in my bowl to like the next morning because who wants to smell, you know, I'd rather smell orange peels, yeah. you know. And um, we had like, they had the little cups, you know, that you, you know, in McDonald's, you squirt the tomato sauce. Well, they would give us like a little fingertip of Vaseline for your entire body. So I would just let it accumulate, 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 but then they would raid the cells. <laughs> yeah, because dude was Then they will take everything. Yeah. And then I said, okay, I got a solution for y'all. And they come and they serve us butter. I'll just butter. <laughs> I just put butter all over myself. You know? Hold that thought. We're having a terrific time with my co-host here, Octavia Duhaney. When we come back, we're going to take a quick short break. We'll be right back. Hope for tomorrow radio here on reggaetoreggae.com. reggaetoreggae.com and we have more for you keep it locked hey everybody i want to take a second or two to let everybody know about wendy one of the the the, the best things i love about wendy um and i never told her you know i just been doing my business running out trying to make a dollar amount and i've been i've been doing good but i've been stuck in that base that base pay but she came up and she told me that you can't do it for the money. You got to remember the love. You got to remember the reason. You got to know why you started your business and let it always stay in your heart and let it burn and you'll put more into it. Wendy had been a blessing and uh, I don't know where I'll be without her. She, she fills my mind every time I speak to her or when I see her on my business and she, she's just a genuine person. It ain't about the money. It's about just a set. My name is Ruel. Hey, and I'm Joya. And this is the man, Jaden. And, and we, we are, are British, British Dependency out of Anguilla. Anguilla. And, and you're, you're listening, listening to Reggae to Reggae TV and Radio. Yes! Yeah, this is Andy Livingston, the Living Roots. All right, now you're tuned to Reggae to Reggae TV. All right, now you don't know. Reggae to Reggae for the best in live reggae music. You know what I mean? Bless up. One love. It's, it's fourth quarter, one second, all you hear is swish My motivation is to keep all the haters pissed It's the anticipation, the way the crowd just sound And I ain't talking home court when I'm stomping ground The stomach hurt, oh lord, my lesson I'm gassed up in that late down to Atlanta Why you talking all the haters wanna see a nigga fall But I'm not cause I'm a champion Hope for Tomorrow Radio here on reggae to reggaecom Radio like you've never seen it, TV like you've never heard it. Um, this is our 
uh, towards the end of our program, we always like to make sure we continue to give out the phone numbers so that you know um, where to call, who to get in touch with. Remember, any donations, Hope for Tomorrow, Care of Wendy Lovejoy, 6555 Sugarloaf Parkway, Suite 307, Duluth, Georgia, 30097. Also, if you have any questions, please reach us at 1-305-454-6484. If you have any questions for Minister Lovejoy, and you can log on to our website, www.moneyanswersallnow.com. You can Facebook her and um, like me, Wendy Lovejoy Coaching. Her YouTube is also Wendy Lovejoy TV. If you're here locally, you can reach us at 876 864 nine six four three also if you have any questions for me eight four five nine five one eight me and octavia is here having a wonderful time this evening continue talking about determination and faith is the key to overcoming all obstacles and don't forget our sentence for today look at yourself in the mirror and say i am the solution to my problems and you were um speaking before we left off telling them about your situation how you had, um, oh, I buttered up. <laughs> yeah. uh, you got all buttered up. So, yeah, yeah, tell us about your experience in there. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, so what I did was I says, okay, well, I mean, what can I do? I'm in the shoe. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, it's really, you're helpless to yourself. Mm -hmm. But, however, what you have is your mind. Mm -hmm. You can't let that go from you, <laughs> Amen. you know. And so it's telling will. our listeners. It will. If you allow it to. So, you know, I stayed um, reading, you know, and it was, it, to me, reading um, fictional stuff was boring. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, if I want to, I could write fictional, you know. So I mainly read a lot of non-fictional and the Bible. You understand? I kept that. I kept it just close to me, stayed strong in prayers, and I just visualized when I'm up out of there, you know, like I just kept on thinking, okay, how many months from now I'm going to be up out of the shoe and I'm visualizing what I'm going to do, you know, what I want, what, you know, what I'm going to do. And my thing was to hit that law library because it was me searching to help myself. And in the quest of helping myself, I was able to help many others. It was like every route I went to help me, it wasn't about me. You know, because every route I went to help me, all the information that I found out that I was looking into, like, okay, Washington versus, you know, and everything, um, Tucker and, and, and um, the gun laws and what have you, the um, computation of sentencing and so forth. It helped someone else. It's like everywhere I turned was like, whoa, oh, brick wall brick wall brick wall nothing to help me you know but everything at that a point time like i would come out the law library and i'd go up and book here comes this girl telling me about her her sentence computation and this that and, and i just read about that and i'm able now to fill out her papers and set mm -hmm. her on a direction so she could go home to her kids yeah. you understand and so every it was like all right father i see where it's going you know and there were so many others that I was able to help. They were younger girls that like facing life sentences and have all these little three month babies and baby after baby, yeah, you know. And yeah. So, you know, I was glad to be able to help others, even though I was really looking to help myself, but True. <laughs> help others. Right. So, you know, it didn't cut me down, mm -hmm. you know. I didn't say, oh, to heck with it. It's not helping me, you know, forget them. You know, it gave me more strength. So I look at that as well. You know, when you help someone else, it do elevate your self-esteem, you know. It pushes you even so more, you know. And a lot of these young ladies, you know, because, like, I felt like an orphanage, like when people are getting their commissaries and their um, letters and I didn't get any, you know, so I would just go to my cell, you know, sometimes I'll cry, you know, sometimes I just have to man it up, you know, to say, hey, you know, but in every other way, things worked for me, like, 
you had the prison officers coming to my door asking me, well, Duhaney, how do you fix the heater? How do you, what should I do? Should I let the first tear out first or the second? I'm like, why you don't just give me the keys? You know, because they're coming to my door. And one morning I wake up and the commissary officers in my cell convincing me to come work in the commissary. And I'm like, I don't want to go to commissary. I'm good in the kitchen because yeah. you know, I was able to, I didn't eat meat. And I was able to regulate my diet yeah. and my scheduling and everything. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, even to the worst, you know, if you're doing the right things and you're respecting yourself, that was one thing I never forgot, yes. you know, is respect. It takes you a far way. Right, you know, it, back. It, just, it just singles you out like a breed apart, you know what I'm saying? Because I was, yes, thank you, excuse me, you know, I mean, to an officer or an inmate, you understand? Like, I didn't scorn anybody. Mm -hmm. You know how, like, they will hold you in the holding tank for days. What? And when a female comes, they're so funky. I didn't scorn them like how their friend would. Mm -hmm. You know, I would set like soap and lotion and deodorant on the table, you know, and I'll say, hey, you know, that's for y'all to, you know, utilize. So they'll just voluntarily go take a shower. Yeah, of course. You understand? Instead Who doesn't of me, want to? Yeah, instead you know? of how they would diss them and run them. Yeah, you stinking and this and that. Right, yeah. You know, right. You know, there's like this, um, older lady she walked the streets her hair was matted i went in the shower with her and washed her hair yeah. and helped her you know what i'm saying so these things i mean it it allows you to see that look you know it's it's more things to life than the things that you were doing you right. know god breaks us down and put us in situations for reasons it's true you know first you learn that god chastised those whom he loves. Yes. Just like a parent. When you tell your child, don't run in the street. You don't just sit back and watch them keep running in the street. Mm -hmm. You're going to grab them and say, boy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you're going to spank that ass. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you're going to tell him to go inside. You're yeah. going to chastise that little kid because you don't want him to of die. Course not. Of course not. You know, because he's doing something yeah. that's going to harm himself. You're going to chastise him because you love him. It's the same thing. Father God looks at us and say, you know, that's a hard-head, rebellious kid. I'm going to grab her and I'm going to sit her down. Yeah, that's true. It's true. It's the same way God does deal with us. That's true. Yeah. But guess what? We're not utterly destroyed. Thank God for that. Yeah, no. It's the same thing. We're here. Yeah. We're home. We're downcast, but we're not utterly destroyed. That's true. That's true. And that's a beautiful way to, to express it. You have so eloquently put it. Because at the end of the day, I mean, not all of us are, are fortunate enough. I look at it like me and you are, we're a bit more fortunate than others. I mean, regardless that, you know, we might have been deported and we've had our hardships. But it's, as they say, it's not, it's not how you start off, it's where you end up. And in our goings along, even though we're not where we would like to be, where we're at right now is far ahead of where others are. And even if we may not have the income or you know certain facilities or you know may not even eat as much as we like or certain things we're still doing better than somebody else and when you look at it you know i always said that the greatest gift somebody could have is determination and faith because at the end of the day everything else you're, you're doing off of is really coming out of you I want to thank my parents for all the beatings I got. <laughs> no, because, you know, really. Sit you on her straight and narrow. It, it allows you mm -hmm. to um, be able to take correction. Yes. You know, some parents. That's, um, that's very true. Yeah. Some parents spoil their kids. Ah, they stop crying. They want this. It serves no purpose. And guess what? Mom or dad is going to get it for them. Why? Because they're crying. Mm -hmm. Not because they need it. Not because of teaching them a lesson like, boy, you don't need that, mm -hmm. you know. And let him cry. You understand what I'm saying? Well, here you got this tough love type of love. And that is what allows you to endure, mm -hmm. you know, and to yes. be strong. You understand? I I mean, you know, I always um look at maybe the things I used to be punished for. 
like I say, I know I'm stubborn. I know I'm rebellious. I mean, you know, I know I wasn't the best of kids. <laughs> I know I wasn't Problem the... Problem child. <laughs> you know, I know I didn't have the furry slippers and the mm-hmm. pink teddy bears. No I was more like a... in the mouth, you know what I mean? You know, I was yeah. more like a tomboy. I wanted to hang with my brother, you know, jumping off the roofs and playing handball in the park, basketball, and stuff like that. Riding on the fixed wheels and flying in the air and scraping up my stomach, knees, and elbows, you know. But um, I look at it and I says, wow, you know, I can endure because I wasn't that spoiled kid Mm -hmm. that got everything, you know. Um, I was corrected when I needed to be, you Mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? Um, I don't think I was the favorite child, you know, even though, you know, my mom say, well, I was my dad's favorite, you know, whatever, but I don't think so, Mm, you know, matter of opinion, but it was the fact that I always felt this strength, you know, like, like, like my independence Mm -hmm. strength, like I don't want to be a dependent. It's true. You know, I don't want to depend on mom giving me everything or waiting on my dad to buy me. It's like, once you said no, it's like, oh, got to think of a way to get it. <laughs> That's you know? right, yeah. And so, I don't say I'm going to go get her. I say I'm going to go get him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to go get him, you know. That's true, yeah. And so, I think, you know, out of being rebellious and stubborn like i said you know i always pray father i know that i'm that Mm -hmm. he knows i'm that but allow me to use this to edify his name that's a part of your determination and faith you kind of yeah you you see that your your negatives what they are yes but as you said god gave them to you as you can use turn them into positives because that little bit of stubbornness and that little bit of pig-headedness is actually your, your that little bit of stubbornness is actually determination in action. Right, and that's what's giving yeah. me my fight now. It's like, mm-hmm. no, I will not fail. You yeah. know, it's like I'm rebellious on it. I'm stubborn on it. You so know? I was telling our listeners earlier, look into the mirror and tell yourself that you are the solution. Yeah, I'm you a winner. Are. It's not I'm coming from somebody else. Because the greatest thing is, I can take your advice. I can take somebody else's advice, anybody that comes along. We can sit here and have great conversations night after night. But if I don't actually put it into action, action. done deal. That's right. Done That's deal. Right. We've got right. about two minutes left on the show. Anything, you, anybody you want to shout out or anything you want to Yeah, mention? shout out to my children because yeah. they always stood beside me. Um, shout out to Wendy Lovejoy. Minister Lovejoy, yes. thank you so much for this forum. Again, her website, www.moneyanswersallnow.com. Wonderful woman of God, terrific business coach, gave us this forum where we could sit down and have these kind of conversations and express our Shout out to you. To reggae, to reggae. And our man with the plan, Carl the Technician Man. Much love to you as well, brother. And for all our deported migrants that are listening out there, as we were just going about it a while ago, telling you guys, please don't give up. Please, please don't give up. I'm not just saying that as like cliche. I really mean that because uh, you're not alone. Find us. You're not alone. We know, we understand, we understand how you feel. We got less than a minute left. Octavia, it's all yours. I want to say something to our donators. Don't hold back. I mean, you know, if this was a scam, I pro- we probably would probably have like a million calls, you know. Yeah. I know when something sincere and genuine I mean where are you now if we had a scam going on good lord uh, you know but this is real this is authentic this is what's going on I mean yes some people may feel like why should we support the deported and so forth and so forth well it's not just support of the deported it's in support of your country. Yeah. It's in support of your fellow man. I mean, we're here, and guess what? We're helping a lot of people other than deported migrants. Yes, we are. But we do not want to lose our focus by helping so many other people. We want to focus on the least of these, whom are the deported who comes here 
don't even know where to turn left or right because yes. they've been gone off the islands from two, four, six. You understand? So let's reach out. Let's show, you know, that there is love for mankind. Yes. Humankind. Very well spoken, my sister. And that brings us to the end of our program tonight here on reggae2reggae.com, Hope for Tomorrow Radio. Thank you for listening in. Please join us next week, same time, same hour, 7 to 9. Ricardo Stevenson, Octavia Duane, Duhaney, I'm sorry, my love. Hope for Tomorrow Radio. It's always a pleasure. That's my I-5. I know. That's that American That's that American, <laughs> that's that American accent. Duhaney. That's that Floridian in me. Have a good night, you guys. God bless, and we shall see you again next week. Yes, people. Thank you. One love. Hello. You know you hear a switch My motivation is to keep all the haters pissed It's the anticipation, the way the crowd just sound And I ain't talking on court when I'm stomping ground It's coming hurt, oh lord my lesson I'm gassed up in that lay down the Atlanta Why you talking all the